Guys, we're gonna do a little film on shakedown to show you kind of the gear that uh, you guys will need to get or talk to your parents about for Christmas because Christmas shopping has begun. Um, so this is a Kelty external pack. It's a 65 liter pack. The external frame packs are a little bit different than internal frame packs and that obviously they have a metal frame that goes with them. There's benefits to either one. It's a personal preference thing on which uh, pack that you want to do, but I would try out different. Actually, Mr. Ransom bought a couple of different packs if one of you guys want to take one of them home um, tonight or the other take one home and try it out during the week, that would be great. So basically, Philmont has a lot of different kind of rules that they go by that kind of require you to bring certain gear that maybe you wouldn't normally have to bring at other campouts. This pack currently, right now, does not have any crew gear or food in it. It has enough water though, and I took all the water out of everything, but with the water, this pack weighs 40 pounds, okay? So if you've been carrying 25 pounds and thinking it's a lot, then you need to up the game, okay? Because I was pretty surprised yesterday when I weighed this, and this is not a lot of stuff. It looks like a lot of stuff, but it's not a lot of stuff. So let's start right here. You guys will be sharing a tent so you will carry half of what this is. These straps are NRS straps, three feet straps. They're pretty heavy duty, because I didn't want them to fall off the pack. You can get lighter straps, but those are pretty heavy duty. So you're gonna have to buy new stakes. Even if you use Philmont tents, you're gonna have to get either no bendiums or a stake that can go through tougher soil than what we have for pin stakes. So these are the type of stakes that you need to get. Okay, you can get both, or you can get just one set, but you'll need at least 10 stakes. Okay, because it does get pretty windy out there, and your tent will fly away if you don't. Belmont does not provide ground cloths, but they require them for their tents too. So if you plan on using a Philmont tent, you will have to buy a ground cloth. This is a Walmart special ground cloth. It doesn't weigh a lot. It was only like 10 bucks. But you can get you know, more expensive ones. You can get lighter ones, okay? And then here's my tent. My tent weighs six pounds. The tent, the... Um, the tarp and the poles, the stakes and the ground cloth all weigh six pounds. Okay? And that's, this, this is a Eureka two-man tent and it cost me about 80 bucks at an auction, Boy Scout auction. It's normally about a $159 tent. So if you're not going to use your own, if you're going to use a tent, either get a light one or use a film on tent. Okay? Next up is right here in the top, which is kind of the rain. I probably won't take this, this little extra water bottle. I'm going to be wearing this hat, but you will need a full brand hat. Okay. Next up is a bandana. Okay, you'll definitely need a bandana. I actually have two here, they don't weigh much. I'll probably eliminate one. But the bandana is the only cotton thing that you will want to carry because you want to wipe the sweat off. You want to use it for maybe washing yourself or something like that. This is a, what do they call these two things? Buff. You definitely want to carry a buff because obviously if it gets cold, you have something to put around your ears. If you're not going to carry something that has a, a, a hood, your rain coat should have a hood, but if you want to stay warm. And then here's like a little miscellaneous thing that I'm going to go through, and a headlamp. The headlamp needs to have a red light, okay? So it doesn't matter how many lumens it is, but it needs to have the red light. Why does it have to have a red light? So you don't blind people. Blind people at night, okay? So it has to have a red light, okay? So this little miscellaneous thing is non-smellable. Okay, I'm going to talk about smellables and non-smellables here in a minute. So within here, 
I'm going to wear sunglasses, but I just want to bring them to kind of show you that yes, you do need sunglasses. I'm going to have this whistle on my body. If your backpack does not have a whistle, you have to have a whistle. Okay, this backpack does not have a whistle. Okay? Compass. You have to have a compass, at least two or three per crew. So we may not carry a compass per person. Okay? Safety pins. I purchased safety pins for the crew because the crew needs them, so you do not have to buy safety pins, but each person will carry about four or five safety pins because you will put your gear on the outside of your bag to dry it off as you're hiking. If you don't think safety pins are good, you want to connect it a different way, that's, that's fine. You don't need a big knife this big, okay? In fact, the knife that I'm taking, I couldn't find, has little scissors and stuff like that, but it's about this size. That's all you need. Because really all you need a knife for is opening the packages of food. There's really no other reason for a knife. You guys will not be carrying your cell phones or battery chargers or anything, okay? But we will have one cell phone for the crew. Each crew will have one cell phone, okay? Because there's no cell service. There's no need to carry, okay? So I have a battery pack for that. The one thing I don't have is a camera, which I would recommend everybody brings a camera because you won't have any way to charge your batteries for your cell phone, okay? Um, I got the head thing for my sunglasses so I can wear them off my body. If you want that, that's fine. Hey, water. Hey, water. I have two nail jeans. But then I also have what's called a smellable bottle. Okay? Everybody must have a smellable bottle. Okay? It can be a nail jean, but this is the only bottle that you're going to put any Gatorade or any um, type of flavored drink because this has to go up in the bear bag every night. Okay? Let's go to the other side pockets. You guys will not need to get this, but we will have some kind of water filtration system per crew. This is a Sawyer Squeeze, which will be one of the water filtration systems our crew will use. We'll probably have uh, just the adults carry those, and we already have that squared away. So I'm one of the adults, so I'm carrying one of the um, water systems. Okay? Go over to the other side. You must have a pack cover. Okay? Rain pack cover. That is a must-have. It will rain. You cannot have a poncho, okay? It has to be rain gear, and I'll go through that with you in a minute. So this pack cover needs to be big enough, and Walmart has them. I mean, this is a Walmart special. As long as it holds up through the training hikes, I'm gonna keep it. If it doesn't, I'm gonna go buy you know, a $30 Kelty one, okay? But it needs to be large enough to fit the pack top to bottom. Well, guess what? I haven't put this on since. It doesn't fit. So guess what I'm gonna be doing? I'm gonna be buying a new one. Okay, so I'm going to add that to my list. Okay, this is one of those um, towels that are dry really quick. You will be having the opportunity to take a shower a couple of times, but you also may have to wipe down your tent if it rains before you pack it up. Because rain or shine, the tent gets packed up and carried. So you may have to wipe off with this chamois type towel to wipe it off before you pack it up and put it on top or in your pack where it's going to get everything wet. Okay? I haven't even gone in the pack yet, right? I'm all on the pockets right now. This is my smellable personal item bag. Okay, and I will go through this. Okay? Do not, you do not need to carry a lot of stuff. Okay, I'm using this to simulate toilet paper because the adults will carry toilet paper, but it will probably be a bigger roll, and I won't carry this. I'm also simulating this with wet wipes. There's what they call biodegradable potty wipes that you will need to carry at least 10 or 15 of those. They're disposable because you won't be taking a shower every day and you'll need to clean your nether regions or you will get some funk and you don't want the funk, okay? Each crew will need to, to carry at least enough for everybody for the 10 days of bug spray You'll need to carry hand sanitizer because you won't be washing your hands typically. When you go to the bathroom, you're going to need to use hand sanitizer. Before you touch your food, you're going to be using hand sanitizers. There's a huge problem with diarrhea at Philmont if you don't clean your hands. 
do you want diarrhea for 10 days? Mm -hmm. Okay, you need to carry hand sanitizer and make sure you are cleaning your hands with hand sanitizer. It's very dry out there. You're gonna need lip, uh, chapstick, okay, very dry. Toothbrush and a very small thing of toothpaste. Okay, this one's almost you know halfway used, and that's all you're gonna need. You don't even need the full one. Okay, I have a challenge with my teeth, so I need to carry dental floss. Okay, you may not need to do that. I wear contacts, so I have to carry a contact solution and contact thing. I may or may not take my glasses, but I may take a backup pair of contacts because there's nothing like being out there eight days and not being able to see. So I gotta think about that one. Okay. Uh, CarMax, I, I got this for two reasons. One is that I, I ordered the, um, the fix-it kit for the stoves and it has lubricant in it, so I'm probably going to bail on this. If you get nothing out of this, this is your friend. Okay? Right here. Did you use this the other day? Okay. What is this? Gold bond. Okay? You must have this. You must individually have this, okay? I have extra batteries for my headlamp. Okay, if you're taking a phone, I mean, not a phone, but a uh, camera, you should take extra batteries for that as well. And then any medicine that you take, I use this to simulate medicine. Here's Advil and stuff like that. That's considered a smellable, so you will need to put that in your smellable bag. You do not need this huge first aid kit. Okay, maybe a few band-aids or something like that because the crew is going to have a blister kit and incorporate it into a first aid kit. So you don't need to carry a first aid kit per se. You will need, you need to carry a lighter. Okay, some type of lighting device. Okay, individually. We'll have, the crew will have some, but you need to carry a lighter too. Okay, and then you guys probably don't need to carry this, but this will probably end up in the first aid kit is if we have like toenail problems or fingernail problems, we'll have that. So that's everything that's in that bag. That's a lot of stuff, right? Okay? So we're still not in the bag yet, so I'm gonna go down to my what's called sleep system. This is unique to film on, in that you require to sleep in different clothes than you hike in, okay? So you must buy or have different clothes. So this is a dry bag because it's on the outside of my pack. But then I also got a garbage bag and tied it off because how important is this to me? Very important, okay? So I have a backpack sleeping bag liner, okay? Because my bag is a 35 degree bag and I may sleep in it or sleep out of it. This may or may not go. It, it weighs a little less than a pound, but I want it to ring. So, these are my sleep clothes. We are going to be, as part of the crew, buying three shirts. Okay, they're all three shirts be moisture wicking shirts. Two of them will be long sleeve, one of them will be short sleeve. One of these sleep shirts will be one of the Philmont shirts. I'm only going to carry those three shirts. Okay, so that's one of the Philmont shirts. Because these have no underwear, and I know they're moisture wicking because they're in the pool a lot. These are simulating, these may go. I actually took board shorts when I went when I was 17 to fill mine because they're so light. And then I have sleep socks, which are wool. Okay, because it could get cold at night, but you also need to protect your feet. You can take them off, you can put them on. Okay? Next up is a sleeping pad. Okay? The sleeping pad, because you could be on a very, very hard surface at Philma. I mean, the camps, they're not like Florida, very soft. You know, Brandon's like, well, I don't need to sleep on a uh, um, sleeping pad. I'm like, well, we're going to try them through the um, shakedowns. Because I've not slept on a sleeping pad. I carry that cot. So I'm not carrying the cot. So the pad is going to be a good compromise. So I'm going to try it out. I got that on sale for 25 bucks. Okay, it's uh, normally a lot more. This is my sleeping bag, guys. This is how, I mean, this, you gotta get down to this size, or smaller, or about this size, okay? Because it will take up so much room in your pack. 
I got that at Academy of Sports on their grand opening sale for 60 bucks. Okay? I looked it up online while I was standing there. It was like $149. It's a synthetic bag. You do not necessarily want to go it down because if it gets wet, you're toast. This is a luxury item. Okay? They have blow up pillows, but this weighs almost nothing and it comes out, it poops out. Let me show you. Yeah. It poops out to a pillow. Okay? And some people will use their puffy shirt, puffy jacket for that. Others will go without a pillow, others will go with their clothes. But that weighs hardly anything, and it's at the bottom in my sleep system. So that's my sleep system. So you got clothes, sleeping bag, pillow, air mattress. Any questions on any of that? And the, and the liner, which may or may not go. Okay? All right, so let's break into the front pocket of this. And I know Mr. Kevin brought his new uh, rain gear the first time to the shakedown uh, that we had in the beginning. Why is this in here? This is a um, dry bag. Why would my rain stuff be in a dry bag? If it's wet, I'm going to pack it wet and move. Okay, so I don't want it to get wet on anything else. So this might be in my pack, wet. Okay, so I want to make sure it's in a dry bag. Okay, and the thing about being in dry bags versus Ziplocs is A, they're more secure, and B, if you need to know what color something is, you can get to it. I haven't even worn these, I haven't even taken the tags off of them yet. But these were on sale at the North Face Outlet. I think I got the pants for 40, and the jacket for, or the pants for 35 and the jacket for 40, okay? And the price is on there, the original price, I think it's like triple that. Okay, so if you guys look, this is the top of the sleeping bag and how much space there's left in it, okay? How much, why is all this space left in the bag? Okay? Crew gear and food. Okay? So you have to have the volume in your pack that's going to hold the crew gear and food. So in here is my bladder. A lot of you guys have not been hiking with bladders. Mr. Tim and I had a big conversation about that at the last Shakedown hike. Why do we want to carry a bladder? Right. Plus, you guys need to be drinking more water than you are. How many of you guys felt dehydrated after Saturday's hike? Got a little dizzy, your headache, whatever. I slept yeah. for four hours. You slept for yeah, four hours. I can't do that normally when I take a minute. And you can't do that at Thelma. Yeah. I can't okay. Do that. <laughs> okay. So that's the, I mean, when Miss Amy, three hikes ago, sent me a picture of Jack sleeping on the sofa after the, after the hike. Guys, that's the worst thing you guys can be doing right now on the training, okay? Is don't go to sleep after you hike because you're going to get your body in the habit of doing that. And then when we get to the destination at Philmont, you're going to want to go in your tent and sleep. And we're going to go want to shoot. We're going to go want to climb. We're going to go want to do stuff. And you're not going to do any of the activities because your body is used to sleeping right after the hike. Okay, so you got to force yourself to stay up. As we get closer, we're going to talk about sleep. We're going to talk about what time you should be getting up in the morning so that you can prepare. Because yes, during the two months before, you're going to be getting up at 6.30 in the morning every morning, and yes, that's summer, and you're going to be needing to go to bed at 9 o'clock. Okay? Okay? Pay me now or pay me later. Okay? And here is a chair. This is a luxury item too. I'm old. So I need my bottom not to sit on a sit on a rock or a stump. You may feel like that you can do that. Good for you. I did it when I went to Philmont. I was 17 and young. But this chair only weighs about a pound and a half. I got this from Premier Outdoor Gear. This chair is normally like for the size of this chair and the weight of this chair, well over a hundred dollars. This chair was $39.99. Okay? And it hardly weighs a thing. Okay? All right? Okay, 
these are my hiking poles. I showed most of you guys on the hike last Saturday. How much are those? These were $57, okay, at the same place, Premier Outdoor Gear. You can get Walmart specials, um, 20 bucks. I think they'll all work. Um, it's personal preference. These are light. They also have the core candle on the top, which definitely I noticed a difference with the sweating. These poles comparable to Leaky, right? Sort of. The black diamonds. Black diamonds are Leaky's, which are well over in the 80s to over $100. So there is the pole. Okay. Okay. This, this to me is a little bit of a challenge because I don't want to go spend money on this and it doesn't weigh that much, but it takes up a little bit of volume in the pack. So if I have an issue, I might have to do something about this. But this is my side hike pack. Okay, and the side hike pack is my Jambo pack, so it's an Osprey, it's a pretty good pack. I took the um, styrofoam pad out of the back which enabled me to roll it up, but this also has space for the water bladder right here, and also for any food or anything like that that we have to carry on a side hike. So it doesn't weigh a lot, but it takes up a lot of space. I think you can get some that go into the little space about this big and they're like 80 bucks. I wouldn't recommend the string bag because the day hike is going to probably be up Baldy. And you're going to be carrying a little string bag up Baldy and that ain't going to work for you very well. So I would recommend at least getting it. And a school bag is going to be too bulky. It's going to be bulkier than that. So that's all that's in my main compartment. And technically I'm going to be hiking with my sticks. So. You know, that's not everything that's going to be in there. Okay, and then down here is the only, and I'm probably going to get a cup because if there's a place to get hot chocolate or something like that, or we have hot chocolate. So I have a Sierra cup that I used to fill out the last time. It's packed away. I need to find it. This is all you need in the cup. Okay, you don't need... The whole mess kit, you don't need everything. We've backpacked camped enough, I think everybody knows that. Okay. Okay. This is this is gonna be like game games, okay? You don't need five decks for the crew, but we need to get together and say, okay, there's gonna be some downtime. We got cards, we got checkers, we got chess sets you can bring. Just some some like little games to play because there are some there's some downtime. Okay? Because I am carrying my cell phone, I'm going to carry this, or I'm just going to put the cell phone in a bag, but I packed it in here. Okay, everybody will need to carry at least 10 Ziploc bags. Okay, because you're going to have to put trash in it, you're going to have to put wet stuff in it that can't go in the dry bags or something like that. I'm carrying an extra garbage bag too. These are bulky as heck, but they don't weigh anything. Okay, I asked Mr. Tim about his thoughts on these. We will allow these as your um, in-camp shoes because they're closed, to closed toes, but they're Crocs, okay? But like I said, they are bulky, but they do fit. Um, and the, the space is not a problem in here, it's the weight, right? But I, Crocs was having a sale, I think these were $19.99, okay? But um, they have to have the toes on the clothes. Anything that you get, so if you can buy, get an extra pair of tennis shoes, you can do water shoes as long as they're closed toed, but you're gonna wanna get out of your boots, okay? In camp, you do not wanna have your boots on all the time. So everybody knows what Crocs are like, so I'm impressed with that. So this is my clothes, okay? And you want your clothes in a dry bag, why? <laughs> you don't wanna get away. What? This is important to you. So this pack, the cover and everything, and it's pouring down rain, this pack is not in your tent. Okay, your pack is not allowed in your tent. Okay, so it's got to stay out under the tarp, and that tarp could blow away, the tarp could rain sideways or whatever, and this pack is going to get wet. So you put your cover on it, you lean them up against each other so it's cover to cover, but it still could get wet. So everything inside that you care about needs to be in a dry bag. Okay, 
and Walmart has three bags for like six bucks. So these are these two right here are Walmart bags. Okay? This is an outdoor research bag right here that was on sale. I got it for Christmas a couple of years ago. But they make really nice ones that actually puff the air out the ends now. So you know that's a that's a challenge too. Alright. What are so, those bags called? Do they have like a name to them? Dry bags. Dry bag or Yeah. Alright, so I went to Walmart and I got Hanes underwear and they're moisture wicking underwear and they're basically they're mesh. Okay? So I got two pair of those. And that's all I'm gonna wear one, carry one. Okay? But you need to have, you can either not go with underwear, go with underwear, go with liners in your pants, whatever you want to do, but do not wear cotton. If you wear whitey tighties, don't wear them. Okay? You're going to want a wool hat, okay? Because it's going to get a little chilly. I got to represent UCF, go Knights. There you go. Okay, this one is representing another one of the Philmont shirts. That will be completely moisture wicking. Remember, I'm only going to carry the three shirts I'm given. One for sleep, one for here. And this is representing my long sleeve Philmont shirt. And it will also be moisture wicking. Okay? So we'll have two shorts and one long. Okay, this is my fleece pullover. Okay? In case it gets cold, I have a layered system. I can wear the long sleeve shirt, I can wear the short sleeve shirt, then the long sleeve shirt, then this, then the rain shirt, our jacket, and the hat. I'm not sure I'm gonna get a puffy sh jacket yet. That's another thing that you can get is one of those really lightweight puffy jackets that squeeze into about a ball that big. They ran in, I mean, uh, can't, uh, Steep and Cheap is having the lower end models on sale right now for $24.99. I'm, I'm, I'm tempted. I got this one at Travel Country Outdoor for $44. Okay, it's a northern, north, northern, north face. The original price on this was $75. Oops. Okay. These I just got in the mail the other day. I'm going to take them out of the plastic wrap. These were on sale at Back Country. They're Merrimont Mer Mer Zip Off Pants. And there's two things I want to point out to you about both my pairs of pants. Okay? They zip off down at the legs. Okay? Why is it important to not only have them zip off there, but then to zip off at the legs? Didn't you have to get boots in? Right, you do not have to take your boots off in order to put them on, okay? Something you're definitely going to have to think about when you're, when you're buying them, okay? So these are zip-offs, so they become shorts. These were on sale at Backcountry for $34, and the price tag on here says... Yeah, you asked the other blind guy, right? How much? 80. So they were on sale for... Yeah, pass them around. They're on sale for $34. Good brand, moisture wicking pants. Okay? I follow the sales religiously. Okay? Me too. All right, so I have basically socks are like the second most important thing. So I have basically three pairs of socks. Okay? Two liners. And then I like, I've been, I really fell in love with these in gingas because they have the little, I call them toe homes or toe pockets, because my toes love to kind of move on each other. And I, and you got a blister Saturday? Did you get a blister Saturday? Okay. We really, really, really need to talk about you guys stepping up and getting the good socks now and the boots now. Okay, because we're gonna be doing more and more hiking and your feet need to get worn in. Brandon got a blister when we first started with this. It was this big on his heel. He was out for the count for two weeks. If you get a blister like that at Philmont, you're going home. Okay? And that's a, that's a whole trip and a whole year of wasted time because you didn't train your feet right. 
So we need to talk to mom and dad about, you know, trying out different socks. These are fits, okay? Brandon, Brandon likes the, um, the wigwams because he tried these fits, he tried the Ingenzas, he tried a couple of darn good socks, and he really liked the, so you need to try on, like, but they're not cheap. I mean, I, I mean, Goat Bros, which is one of the websites I sent you guys, had a sale where these were 20% off, and you buy two for $23, and they're normally like $14, or no, they're usually like $25 for that, and I got them for 14. Okay, so that's still expensive, but guess what? Your feet are critical, okay? A blister on the trail is almost a death sentence, okay? Do you want to add anything to the blisters? Uh, it's easier to stop a hot spot. So if you're starting to feel a blister, it's better to stop than if you have a little inner cup paper or something to slap on it. You can also get certain... Two blisters, it's, it's usually from friction, so anything you can do to stop the friction. That's why the toe socks probably work for you. Yeah, because the friction is what creates the blisters, right? So you're wearing cotton socks and you're wearing tennis shoes that may or may not fit, or boots that may or not, may not fit like yours. And that's why I brought the boots and didn't wear them today because I, I wanted to demonstrate a couple of things. One is I'm a size nine, these are a size 10. Okay, and you want to get a little bit bigger because even if you don't buy them from REI or Travel Country, you have this little stand up there that you can kind of feel. And if your toes hit the front of your boot, don't buy them. Okay, you don't want your toes to hit the front of the boot. Why, Mo? Because when you're going downhill, you are just like smash up your toes and it hurts like very bad. <laughs> it's amazing. Okay, and, and, and I'm, I'm at an angle Right there with the way I'm putting my boots is probably an angle that you will be on more than once. Yeah. Okay? You will be going downhill at that angle more than once. Okay? And you'll probably be going uphill at that angle more than once. And that's one of the reasons why these will help you. Okay? Because we're not accustomed to having 40 or 50 pounds on our back. We're out of balance. And that's why, as Mr. Tim has said, we need to start increasing the weight one pound a week or so. Come on, Angel. Okay. We're almost wrapped up. So that we can get used to that. Is there anything in there that you say, well, geez, Michael, Mr. Towns, that looks like it's excessive. That looks like it's too much. It's a lot. But you're going to be gone for two weeks, and the stuff that you carry on the bus is not the stuff that's in the pack. You guys will have another pack the stuff that you'll have on the bus. Okay, so we'll go over that stuff another time. This is only what goes on film up. I didn't bring the duffel bag, but I have a duffel bag that this is all gonna go in and go on the airplane, and I'm not gonna touch this again until we arrive at film up. You will, you, like I said, you will have a carry-on bag with your extra clothes, your toiletries and stuff like that, an air mattress or whatever for when we're at the other places. Any questions on any of this stuff? Well, thanks very much for taking the time. I'm not an expert at this, but I've watched a lot of videos, and now this one's going to be on video. We might post it on YouTube and do all that. So thank you all very much, Troop 692, Oviedo, Florida.